Hello, everyone. This is Lori from Over 10 Travel. Thank you for joining the web webinar today. Um, today is the second webinar in our series of webinars to take you around the world for the next, next couple of weeks. Um, today we're talking about Dubai, in particular the Dubai Expo, which is fabulous. So you're definitely in for a treat. Before we get started, I want to just um, go over a couple things with you. Um, so this is a webinar style, which is different than the meeting that you've been on. You can see me and you'll see the speaker, um, but we can't see you. Um, so if you have any questions to ask, please, please, um, please write them in the Q and A box at the bottom. At the bottom of your screen, there should be a box that says that says Q Q and A, and then you should write your your question your questions there. And, um, and then we will answer all of your questions at, at, the, at the end of the call. You should see me bigger now. We'll answer all your questions at the, at the end of the call. Um, we have our moderator, Donna. Um, so she will be the person typing in your, Q, your question box or taking your questions at the end. Um, do not put your question um, in the chat box. It's better to put them in the Q, the Q and A box. Um, so I think that's it for now. So today your speaker is going to be Jose. He is from Expo Dubai 2020. Um, he will talk about um, the whole expo piece of it. I know some of you guys were scheduled to go to Dubai this year, but you know, a little thing called COVID-19 came in and just kind of um, turned all our plans tops, topsy turvy. Uh, but you still may have a, a chance to go to the expo. So um, I'm going to let Jose um, join in and he's going to do, do the presentation and tell you all about this fabulous um, expo in Dubai because you know, if you know anything, you know, Dubai does things and they, and they do it like no one else does. So, all right, Jose, I'm going to turn it over to you and you so um, let you take it from here. Okay. Okay, great. So you shared just the screen, right? I'm going to go ahead and Okay, share so let my me... screen. I think you have to share yours first. Okay, so let me do this. So I am no longer sharing my screen. Okay. So okay. then I'm there you share go. my screen. There I go. Yep. Ooh, sorry about that. It should have been no up problem. already, but it is not. And there <laughs> it is. Okay. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to Wanderlust Wednesdays. I love this idea that Lori has to take her clients sort of on a virtual trip and get them excited uh, to start planning, even though all of us are, I'm sure, um, like most of uh, all of us here in the, in the country are sheltering in place and we're staying at home and staying safe and taking care of our loved ones. So um, as Lori mentioned, I um, represent um, Expo Dubai 2020. Um, and I'm gonna go through a really quick agenda about what I'm going to be covering. Um, and it's just a simple update now, given the situation with COVID-19. And then I'll do a presentation on uh, Dubai, uh, on the Expo 2020 itself. And then I'll talk through some marketing collateral that we have so that if you want to share it with your family or share it with uh, other members in or other associations, church groups, you can go ahead and share it. Uh, and then you can get back in touch with Lori to go ahead and book the, um, the trip itself. Now, just to give you a, a, a sense of what has been going on, uh, the government of the United Arab Emirates has formally requested the postponement of World Expo 2020 uh, to the Secretary General of the Bureau International of Expositions. Now, uh, to give you a sense what that means is, the, the, the Expo 2020 is basically the World Fair, and um, because there are member countries involved, um, the government of the host country has to say, we see this issue coming uh, up and it is affecting the ability of our partner countries that are coming into the country, building new structures, building new um, attractions. And we realize that that's going to be delayed. So formally, what we were doing is requesting a delay. Um, the new proposed dates, um, are the 1st of October, 2021, and it will last through the 21st of March, 2022. 
Um, we will continue to use the name Expo 2020 Dubai because that is when the date was supposed to originally occur. And just to give you a sense, that would have, that would have taken place if uh, we had not had this uh, crisis that we have currently um, on the 20th of October 2020. Um, the step now that the individual member countries have to do is they actually have to vote. Um, so all the countries that are members of the International uh, Exposition Bureau uh, get to vote and agree. Um, it is about a 90% uh, sure that the new dates, again, will run from the 1st of October 2021 to the 31st of March 2022. So, um, so it is on, it is postponed, but nonetheless, it will, uh, it will take place. So just to give you a little bit of a little bit of sense, like I'm sitting in, in Montclair, New Jersey. So uh, right across the river in, in Queens, uh, in Corona Park and Flushing Meadows, we had our World Fair here in the United States in the 1930s, late 1939, and then in 1964 and 65. Uh, to kind of give you an idea, a lot of countries around the world have hosted it, uh, the World Fair. It, it happens every five years. And what it does is it brings a whole bunch of countries together into one destination, creating a whole bunch of different pavilions who highlight the heritage, culture, achievement, innovation in each of the, these individual countries and create a really unique experience during a several month period. Uh, what's great about things like this is that a lot of times when you move uh, a World Fair into a, a place, um, a lot of infrastructure is built. So um, some of the structure that uh, was used in the World's Fair in, in the late 30s today is where, you know, we, where we go to the U.S. Open. So uh, it is a big undertaking. It changes a city and it changes infrastructure in a city. So that's something that's really unique and wonderful. Um, Dubai has a lot of firsts as a World's Fair. So to give you a sense, it is the first World Fair it is the first expo to take place in the region of Middle East, Africa, and Southeast Asia, South Asia. So this is the first time um, for the destination. It will have the largest number of pavilion countries participating, and that's 192 pavilions. So imagine that each of these countries are building a pavilion on the site of the World's Fair in Dubai. This is also the first time that no country will share a pavilion. Every country will have their own. Um, there are 25 million visit ex, uh, visits expected. And to give you a sense, about 70% of the business will, uh, I'm sorry, the visitors will come from outside of Dubai. So it'll, it'll also make it one of the first most international World's Fair that we have. Um, every World's Fair has, uh, has, three, uh, has three or four themes, multiple themes. Um, the themes for the World Fair this year are opportunity, mobility, and sustainability. All of these are clear initiatives around the world that have, um, um, that have been major focuses, whether it be in government, in education, in business. And, and the government of Dubai and the people of the World Fair have chosen these as the main themes for the, um, for the World Fair this year. So the, to give you a sense of the, sale, uh, of the scale and size, the, the area encompasses 4.38 kilometers, which is a little, it's almost, uh, it's about a little over two and a half miles, so almost three miles um, in size. And this is a, uh, a rendition, an artist rendition of the area. Uh, the center of the, of the exposed site is the Al Wasl Plaza, which uh, I'll show you a copy of, I'll show you uh, some images of the, of the beautiful main um, attraction event there. There are different uh, districts which will house the, um, the different pavilions. And then there are, um, there are, are different attraction uh, locations all during, all throughout the site. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and try to talk through this and there will be some music. Maybe you'll be able to hear some of it, but it will give you a sense of the design. So think, think beyond the 21st century, think mobility, state-of-the-art architecture. 
ease of movement for all of its visitors. Truly a world class um, world's fair, never having had the scale and scope of it. A lot of the architecture will also be uh, will be quite changing. I can make that available uh, through Lori for any of you that are looking to um, to get a copy of it. Um, to give you a sense that that one center round um, uh, pavilion in the middle is also in a, is an attractions uh, space. So I want you to I want you to imagine that this dome, uh, which will be uh, hundreds of stories high, will also be a will also have the ability to project whatever um, artist attraction movie. Um, uh, any event that's happening in the center stage. So no matter where you sit within the Al uh Plaza, um, you will be able to look around you, above you, behind you, and see the image uh, uh, projected. So it's really, really special. The word Al Wassel, or, or the phrase Al Wassel means connection. It is the um, ancient name of the city of Dubai, and it means connection. So uh, again, a, a, a sort of a, uh, this is an homage to the original name of the destination and to the Emirati people. This is the Al Wasl Plaza that I was uh, describing to you. A little bit of what that design looks like. Some of the leaders that have been instrumental in making that happen. Now I want you to imagine that uh, any artist, world artist, and to give you a sense, uh, there are artists from around the world, some American artists as well. Uh, Will I Am, for example, of the Black Eyed Peas, is one of our um, talent spokespersons. So just imagine if you've got someone like, I don't know, Shakira or uh, Beyonce in the center of that plaza projected 360 degrees. It is going to be something that is going to be um, awe-inspiring. I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview of what the of, of what the expo will look like and the different areas of the event space, um, and then also the layout and some of the different locations within the expo. Um, so to give you a sense, there are going to be a, those 192 country pavilions. So each nation that participates will create a pavilion to highlight something special about their country and something about innovation or something that they wish to relay and share with all of the people coming to the World Fair. There are going to be 60 live events every day. So no matter what day you are there, it's never going to be a bad day. There's always going to be some entertainment, whether it be local uh, folkloric entertainment from the region or from outside of the region. Um, it may be a performance by uh, a world famous artist. It may be a film. Um, and then the, the thing that is going to really make this World Fair stand out in a way that has never been done before is the dining experiences. There are going to be 200 different dining experiences. So everything from a food truck to a Michelin star rated chef. So expect to see a lot of your favorites from Master Chef and from the Food Network. Um, all of those folks um, are being brought in to create a really unique food experience. Um, the, the, the pavilions of, of, of around the world are really, really uh, interesting and unique. And each of the different areas that we spoke about before, the Opportunity Pavilion, the Sustainability Pavilion, and the Mobility Pavilion, will each have, uh, will each have different countries underneath them. So this will be the center of all of the country pavilions. And of course, this is the pavilion of the host country, which is the United Arab Emirates. This will probably be the crown jewel of the pavilions. It is clearly the host country. Um, it is in the image of, uh, of a falcon, which is a, a historical and mythological um, uh, sort of entity and animal that's very much associated with the Gulf region and uh, Arabian history and culture and music and art. So uh, it will really be sort of the center of it. It'll be an amazing space to be able to go to walk through. Um, and then each of the individual areas will have their um, 
each of the individual areas will have a country pavilion. So uh, here, for example, we see uh, the Opportunity uh, District. Um, and I'm going to pick one random example. So we see the United Kingdom at the lower right hand corner. So the, just to give you a sense of what the, of what the countries um, come up with in the sense of how they choose to show up to, uh, to the World Fair. So the UK Pavilion is a creation of the astrophysicist Stephen Hawking, who imagined a world of what the earth would look like if aliens were coming to the earth and for the first time humanity was trying to explain itself to it in its history so how mind-blowing is that their pavilion is that story um and i think that that's a really that just gives you one example of what each of these districts will look like um, here's the mobility, um, here's the mobility um, uh, district. It will have all of the different countries in here. A lot of countries that, that you'll, you know, you'll come to recognize and uh, will, will each in their own way show up very, very um, special. Um, and then uh, finally, the sustainability uh, pavilion, uh, pavilions, I'm sorry, district within the pavilions that'll be there. I'm going to bring up something here just because I'm, uh, I love calling out Lori, uh, Lori Overton as she's, uh, she's someone who's well known in the industry for her um, being sensitive to the needs of women and female travelers and a lot of girl getaways and um, one of the few pavilions that will be uh, at the World Fair, which is in the sustainability district, is the women's pavilion. It will be one of the few pavilions that is not associated with the country, but is dedicated to women around the world. Um, and I think that's really unique and special. Uh, and to give you a sense, um, it, the, the uh, Cartier, the, the French world-renowned jeweler and watchmaker, and the United Arab Emirates, the government of the United Arab Emirates, led by Her Excellency Reem Al, Al Hashimi, who is the not only executive director for the entire World Expo, but she is also the Minister of Economic Commerce for the country. They are leading this effort to create a pavilion to speak to women women's achievements, women's, uh, women's rights. Um, and I think that it's just super special. To give you a sense uh, of something really unique, um, Alma, um, Alma, I'm sorry, Amal Clooney, uh, George Clooney's very famous wife, probably almost as famous as him and one of the world's leading uh, human rights lawyers uh, and activists, is the narrator that takes you through this experience. So you've got Amal Clooney, taking you through this pavilion dedicated to women around the world. I just think that that's super special. Um, it also speaks to the Emirati people. It speaks to their, uh, to the importance of their society and making sure that women are represented. I mean, as I just mentioned, um, Her Excellency herself is, is, is uh, the, Her Excellency Rima al Akshimi is leading uh, the um, the effort completely for the uh, for the World Expo. So I think it's super unique that there's an entire pavilion dedicated to women. Um, the other thing that you will not be lacking is events. There will be events every single day, um, 60 of them actually, live events coordinated. Imagine the scale of this. Now we're talking six months, so there's the ability to do this, but we're talking about thousands of events that will take place. So you've got eight list concerts. I mentioned, you know, talent. Uh, talent is still uh, to be um, to be announced. Um, the uh, the Al Wasl show. So imagine again, whatever show is in the Al Wasl, it will be happening 360 degrees. There will be children activities. The uh, World Fair has made a commitment to children and to making sure that there are lots of activities for children. There will be a daily parade by country, and I'll explain that in just a second. Uh, there will be global art installations, and then culturally, uh, they want to make sure that each of the each of the destinations has the ability to show off, um, who, you know, what they particularly want, uh, whether it be dance or music or art or theater. 
Um, and this will give you a sense on a weekday of what of what a day might look like. Um, that's why one of the key things with with the uh, World's Fair is it isn't the kind of thing that you go for the day and get a you know get a one day pass. Uh, no disrespect to Disney, which I love. I absolutely love Disney, but this is sort of like a, a once in a lifetime experience, and it truly is. It's sort of like an Olympics, um, and it's the kind of thing that you need to spend more than a day at. Um, the the thing that I think is really really unique is the fact that um, all of they will have special days dedicated to major holidays around the world and festivals and international days. But then each country will have their own day every single day. So if you you might be there on Independence Day now. It, it won't be independence, like it won't particularly be the 4th of July, but on that day, the United States will be scheduled to show off um, all things American. So apple pie, and it might be, who knows what it might be. It, it'll be, you know, maybe it'll be country music or rock music, or it'll be something very typical of that destination. You might be there on Bastille Day, and all of a sudden it's croissants and French music and um, uh, and uh, uh, culture and food of France. So every single day will be a different um, will be a different country. And because there are 192, uh, there will be uh, tons and tons of events. Um, the other thing I think that's really interesting is that there will be a lot of business focused events. So I know a lot of folks are disappointed because South by Southwest is canceled. Magic in Vegas was canceled. CE Consumer Electronics Shows was canceled in Vegas. So there's a lot of big business and uh, tech shows that were canceled. Um, so it's it, for those of you that have a particular interest, maybe you, maybe you work for a not-for-profit, maybe you work in pharma, maybe you work in a medical field, there will be industry and business themes going on during the entire time of the expo. Um, and that's surely to be uh, something that I think will become more of a focal point as so many events have been canceled and people are looking to interact with others in their field. Um, and then I mentioned food. Uh, we are talking about food concepts uh, never, you know, never shown before. Um, 50 plus uh, country cuisines, um, celebrity chefs, um, but also streetcar food. Um, th there's, a, there's a great culture of food happening very much in people's homes and on the street, depending on the culture uh, and the part of the world that this food will be highlighted. So just rest assured that you can go for anything from a, a food market to a food truck to a grab and go, to um, to the kind of stuff that you will that you'd have you know much more upscale um, and these you can again you can pick the kind of thing that you're looking to do um, and then just plan your day accordingly. Uh, one of the other things I think that's really kind of interesting is that you will have um, different themes. So because because the um, expo is taking place in the Gulf region and its proximity to Asia, now think Asia as in India, Asia and Southern Asia, there will be an entire quarter dedicated to Asian, Indian, um, and, and Arab, like an Arabic food. So that will be clearly something that will be a focus. Um, there will be an area um, for, uh, which we're calling a family circle, um, which is, uh, will allow kids not only to have kid-friendly food, but also engage in cooking classes. So you, you might be spending the day making, uh, I don't know, making shortbread cookies with in the in the England pavilion uh, with your kids. So that's that's kind of an idea of what you're that would be happening there. And then signature stars, those are going to be the celebrity chefs. Those are going to be the Marcus Samuelsons of the world. Um, those are going to be the, those types of uh, stars, um, and those will be available as well. And then something we're calling the urban block. We're also used to having our food courts. Um, and that, that concept just not only happens here in the U.S., but it happens around the world. So easy grab-and-go stuff, very authentic, inexpensive, and the ability to sort of everybody gets, everybody's happy because they're all getting something that they can, uh, in their, something that they're going to enjoy. Um, again, food of the future, so molecular, if you want to talk about molecular fusion and, and gastronomy, uh, that will be happening. 
uh, to the to the Master Chef experience, where you're going to get uh, celebrity chefs from around the world battling it out to see who who wins with prizes. Um, here's a here's a couple of just like simple information about the layout, about the destination, how far things are. Um, so to give you a sense, downtown Dubai is about 30 minutes from the from that center space that where you see the, the yellow um, expo um, symbol. Um, Abu Dhabi, uh, the, uh, the, the, you know, the capital of the, of the Emirates and the gorgeous city in, in itself, and which offers a lot. There is no way you can get all your way, you can get yourself all the way here and not see both cities. It's just, it would be a disservice because each one is, com is very, very different and each one is very, very unique and each one is super special. So 50 minutes away, 30 minutes away, 50 minutes for Abu Dhabi, 30 minutes from, um, from Dubai. Um, there is a, a massive network of new metro rail train that's going to be connecting the expo site with the different cities and also getting you around the site itself. There will be expo shuttles from all major hotels. You can use a taxi, and even some uh, people are you know, are preferring to even uh, rent their own vehicle. So regardless, it is it is going to be a place where you can easily get to from your hotel, whether you're staying in Dubai or Abu Dhabi. Um, and then once you're at the site itself, you can get around it completely. Um, the the to give you a sense of the cost, uh, which is really just such a a, a great and easy cost. Um, so like a, an adult ticket for, for a three-day ticket is $70. Um, that includes entrance into the main, uh, you know, into the, to the main um, exhibition, all of the pavilions, a lot of the activities that are going on. If there is headliner talent, if there is a, a unique food experience, they may have uh, additional fees. But the $70 for the most part gets you in to a full experience for a three-day um, adventure. Um, I'm gonna just show um, a, a couple of quick slides, and these are really assets that um, Lori will be your point person, but this is something that I think uh, is just, if you've got a, a group of, of, of people that you wanna pitch this to, say this is a family reunion, say this is your, you know, your local church, say this might also be an association or a veterans association, whatever it may be, um, this, is, this is the kind of material that will help you give some itineraries, it'll show videos, it'll give you a sense of how, uh, what will be going on at the, at the World's Fair, and these are available to sort of give you a better idea. The one, the one group that I neglected to mention um, are students. There will be lots of experiences for young people um, and uh, student age people. And, I, and we're talking from high schoolers to, to university to post-grad. Um, there will be lots of experience for hands-on. Uh, there will be seminars. Uh, there will be, uh, there'll be uh, all kinds of uh, multiple language um, exhibitions. So that's something that I also uh, want you to think about if you've got some university, if you've got a group or a university group that you think might there might be a handful of students and they're going they're considering going on um, Lori's trips this is this is a great um, and then you know then again some of this other stuff here may not you know may, may not pretend to you but we also um, are welcoming organizations and companies that will take a group and bring them to the bring them to the World Fair as an event um, that's where, that's where I'm ending. Um, I'm happy to answer some questions and I know Donna had mentioned to me, I'm actually going to take this off so that you can see me. Um, hold on just one second. And I'm trying to get my camera back on. Okay. Give me just one second. There we go. So I know there's a, that's a lot to take in, but I, I think one of the things that um, I think one of the things that's key is um, because we've got such great carriers um, going into the region, and you may be you know it's interesting. I was talking to Lori about this before. You may be doing a um, you may be doing a South Africa trip, 
or you may be doing uh, a, a trip to another destination. Um, Dubai is a great middle point. Uh, we were talking about this before on my last trip to South Africa and, mm -hmm. and actually a trip before that to Kenya, I used Dubai as my middle city. So I went New York, Dubai, Dubai, Nairobi, and then I did also New York, Dubai, Dubai, Joburg. You know, um, and what's great about what's great about that too is that because you've got nonstop, you can get yourself right into Cape Town if that's something that you'd rather do than than go into Johannesburg and then fly backwards. But it is the perfect it is the perfect stopover destination because there's so much to do, um, and this World Fair again will be will be mind blowing just because it again it happens only um, it happens only every five years. And I love something that uh, Lori said when she introduced it. If you know anything about Dubai, it's over the top. You know that, mm -hmm. that the Emirati people do everything over the top, whether it is architecture, luxury, culture, hospitality, warmth, love. They do everything to excess. And it is just a lovely, lovely place to um, to you know, to go and to spend time and to really get underneath the destination. And if it's going to be your stopover, spend a couple nights because you'll have a great time. And with that, I will shut up and I will listen now to Donna's <laughs> question. Hey, hey, Donna, before you dive into some questions, can I make, can I um, point out a couple of things that I know that sure, some sure. people may, um, may be wondering about? Um, one of the best things about the Dubai Expo, of the many things, is seniors the car we, we talked about the price for the adult passes but jose do you want to tell us are seniors that's still right. free seniors yeah. are free yes anyone that's 65 or older are free which i think you know i'm getting so whatever i think 65 is young <laughs> <laughs> i have a really hard time with anybody using the word senior for a 65 year old yeah, so I have a large, I mean, uh, I, I would say at least 50 to 60 percent of my clients um, are seniors. So this is a good perk for them. Perfect. All you have to do is get there from the hotel. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love the fact that um, the, the infrastructure that's being built, getting there is not a problem because easy. Um, Very easy. one group I have staying at the Aloft Hotel as a, as a, um, as a layover, um, okay. the, the train was going to go right to to the um, expo and it the does. group that I had scheduled for Dubai in December, we're going to stay to JW Marriott Marquis, which I believe was on that same route um, to, to the hotel, um, to the expo. So um, that that's also a good thing because I can design my trip in such a way that you can get to the expo during your free time. You know, I can have yeah. organized time, but you don't have to wait for the whole group, you know, you can just decide to go at nine o'clock, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, and, and the expo, I believe, goes until two a.m. or so. Correct. So it's open Correct. late. So yeah. for those of you who may want to do an excursion during the day, um, you can still, you know, do your daytime excursion, have dinner or have lunch or whatever, and still have time to get to the expo in the evening. So um, the the timing is great. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out was mobility. So you said it's about two miles, I guess, wide along, which is kind of big. Uh -huh. So it's are there uh -huh. any consideration for people with different mobility issues? Yep. Um, if yep. I needed to get a wheelchair there or is it primarily flat? You know, I, I know you guys, have, you know, the A UAE thought of everything. So any Correct. consideration so the, for that? So the, you're up. That's a great question. So number one, the people mover within, within the expo complex itself has stops at every place you could want to stop. So like if, if there's a if there's a district area where all the main pavilions are, say say you really want to go to the US want the, the US pavilion and you want to go to France and then maybe over here you want to go to China, maybe over here you want to go to South Africa. So you 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 pick ahead of time and you can get off where you need to. And then if we there, it will be wheelchair accessible. That's absolutely that's mm -hmm. absolutely true. And you, you'll be able to get that if you need to and you just have to arrange it ahead of time. But uh, it's absolutely uh, one of the one of the great things about the UAE is that it is very sensitive to people with uh, with disabilities and mobility issues. So that's that's it's very easy to get around it, um, and that should not discourage someone from you know from every from the theaters to the pavilions will 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 be wheelchair access. Um, think also too because um, 
because one of the themes is sustainability, not only are we talking about access, but it's also about making sure that stuff is reusable, recyclable. Like it's all, so that's also a theme too. So it's mobility, access, and also sustainability. Great, 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 thanks. Okay, I'll, I'll let Donna dive into um, some of the questions from um, the participants now, okay. Um, so, will there be social distancing and use of masks when we get to the World Expo? Do you know that answer? So, I, I don't know that answer because um, we're, we're talking um, October of 2021. Uh, so I, um, I'm, I'm not sure what, uh, at that point, I don't know where we will be with COVID-19. Um, I, I want to I give, just to give those, uh, those of you on this call an idea. Emirates, which is the national carrier of, the, of Dubai, tests their passengers with the 15 minute test before you get on the plane. And B, the in-flight flight attendants today are wearing PPE. I mean, the kind of stuff that we're having trouble, like I, I mean, I live in New York, New Jersey. Remember in the beginning, we couldn't get PPE for nurses. Their flight attendants are wearing them. I, this, is the kind of, this is the kind of society and government that they are. Um, healthcare, cleanliness, hygiene, technology. It is, it's on the forefront. So I assure you that in 18 months, wherever we are with COVID-19, the UAE will make those, uh, will, will make the necessary uh, provision. And if, if social distancing is required, they will currently, that is a requirement uh, in the UAE. So people are asked to social distance today. Uh, again, it's 18 months out, who knows where we will be. But um, I assure you that the UAE is already um, taking those steps and quite frankly, ahead. Can you give us the projected dates for the new um, expo again? Sure. So it'll be it's the 1st of October 2021 until the end of March 2022. So that that expo is like five months long, correct? <laughs> correct. It runs, it, it was like a five, six month window, six, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lori, do you want to discuss when you're possibly thinking about going? Because that's one of the questions we'll up to be um, that, there. It would, it would definitely be during the expo period. All the trips that I had this year um, coincided with, um, with the expo. So we'll see. I had a trip that was, I think, December 5th or so. So more than likely it'll be about the same date. Um, it's just too early to book that far in advance. Um, flights aren't available. Um, you know, like you said, 18 months in advance is too far to, to book out things that far in advance, but it will be around, um, around the same dates. Okay. Is there a package deal for the food or can you purchase daily or on your own? So is, at, I'm sorry, I think that's for Lori, right? That's for you, I think it's for you, that's Jose. For you. Think, so when they go to the expo, they're wanting to know, is there a package deal for them to buy the, be able to buy food or do they purchase daily on their own? They, they purchase daily on their own. There are so many food options that it's, it's frankly, in, like, um, it's frankly impossible to sort of like uh, to pick one food package. Um, there, there are people that will want to do uh, that want to do street food. You know, like I, I worked at Travel Channel, for example, to give you an example. So um, Travel Channel had entire uh, shows dedicated to, to, to food trucks and, and, and street food. So there are those people that will just want to do, I'm going to have my chicken satay here, or over here, I'm going to have my Filipino lumpia. Over here, I'm going to have some barbecue. Over here, so it's literal. so that person is going to have that kind of food. Then there's going to be the person that wants some of that, but then they want to have a sit down, you know, I'm going to have a celebrity chef cook for me today. And that's, that's fine. So there are no, there are no food packages uh, per se. Um, there are, there are multiple food experiences, depending on what the, the needs of each different um, visitor. Okay. 
Um, how many days would you suggest to enjoy the expo? It's like a three part question. So okay. do that and then I'll go to the next part because there's three more questions that same person has. So um, how many days do you um, suggest to enjoy the expo? Do you know the schedule when it will be finalized for planning purposes? Okay, so the, the, the schedule as far as the dates we know, uh, we, uh, the, the dates are, are, are almost 85, 90% set. And I reason, the reason I say 85, 90% set is because there's a voting process that the member countries have to, that the member have to, countries have to do. Keep in mind, these pavilions are being built. So uh, they literally are like, they're building this stuff from scratch. So because they're doing that, they couldn't get architects, they couldn't get uh, engineers, they couldn't get the people coming into the country because there are travel restrictions. So that is why the UAE said, we need to, we need to delay this. Now, um, the schedule is what it is as far as, as, far as the time of day. Um, I, can, I, I can share all of that. There, there, is a, there is a day daily schedule. I think it runs from eight, nine o'clock in the morning again till two, till 2 a.m. You need three days. I think you need three full days just simply because there's so much to do. Also, if you know ahead of time, you may, you may want to go to a particular thing. You may want to go to a, a, a particular festival or there may be something going on or there may be a, a performer you want to see. Um, so I, I, uh, that, that will depend and that will vary. I, I, I personally think you need I think you need three days and again three days and you can do it comfortably but then uh, you know you can't go uh, I mean you, you can't go to uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi and not and or Dubai and Abu Dhabi and not see the, the cities as well so you need to do some of that as well so a Dubai trip like might be a week with like a bunch of days in the middle where you just mm -hmm. do um, the expo and if it's a stopover maybe it's uh, focused on the expo and then a little bit of a side trip where you do some stuff and you see the, the key attractions in Dubai. And if you can sneak over to, to Abu Dhabi too, that might be, that might be interesting too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that's exactly how um, I had the December trip planned out with some free time just for the expo uh, as well. And so I may massage it a little bit um, for next year um, to allow even, even more free time or just some optional tours so you know you'll have i i have some people that were signed up for the december trip who have been with me before to dubai so they've already done the desert dune they've been to abu dhabi and seen the mask mosque mm -hmm. so they may not want to do everything that was included so maybe i may make some things optional and then okay. also just to let you guys know that you know i have the group trip that i'm planning for december but I do individual trip to Dubai as well. So if you get the schedule and you say, you know what, I really want to go in October or I really want to go in February or March when they're having something, that's okay because I can, um, I, I can book you individually a, as well. So I'll have the group at a certain date, but then um, if that date doesn't fit, um, fit you, then all, by all means say, hey, Lori, can you schedule something for, um, you know, for my family? for, you know, the week of February 15th or something. So keep that in mind. So what is the weather like during that time period? Do you know, Jose? Uh, the weather during uh, the December. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the weather, the weather is, it's, it's, I mean, it's warm. It's, it's, so it's a warm, I mean, the, the, the weather is, so it's a desert climate. It's warm. It will not be as hot as the, as the heat of the summer. So the months of July, June, July, August, um, those are really well it can, it can start getting really hot all the way up you know as may and, and april but uh so the weather's comfortable it can be um you know it can be in the 80s and maybe even warmer during the day but it's the desert so it cools down at night so uh keep that in mind i don't know if any of you have ever been out to like arizona or california where you've got some desert and it's hot 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 during the day and then it'll cool down at night so keep that in mind too. Make sure you bring like sweaters and layers. It's funny when I would see colleagues who are Emirati, they, they would have all the like, you know, they'd throw on shawls and stuff and I'd be like, what's going on? And then it'd get really cold and I'd be the, I'd be the cold one because they were all wearing, you know, nice, <laughs> wonderful wraps around them. So, but you can get all that stuff really inexpensive at the souks, at the markets. 
So that's, that's the kind of stuff that's always fun to do too. And people love to haggle and there's no paying the right price. You know, you just, you got to like argue with people and say, I'll, I'll give you $2, you know? So have, that's always a fun part of like shopping in the Middle East. Okay. If one becomes ill, what healthcare would generally be available to tourists? So how do they handle so, that? So there, there, um, because it is the world that I go, there is absolutely healthcare on the premises, doctors, nurses, um, so in the event that there were an, there were an event at the expo, um, there, uh, there are not just first aid stations, there are, there are, um, there are, you know, like urgent care locations throughout the expo. So, um, that would, that, that would be addressed. And then depending on the severity of the illness, I mean, it, hopefully it's, I don't know, someone twists an ankle or something, it might be sim something simple in the event that something like a bone needs to be set or something, they'd be moved to a, to a, to a hospital or something. But, uh, but there will be a full healthcare on, uh, full healthcare in the sense of to be able to treat visitors uh, for anything that wouldn't be m m uh, major. Next one is, um... The expo itself seems as if it takes days to explore. Will we be able to see um, Dubai? Because it seems like there's just so much to do. Do you really think that people will have time or yeah. is that a more of a boring question? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll, um, um, I'll take it. Yes, of course. I mean, um, the expo is definitely one of the highlights of going to Dubai, but it's not the only highlight. Um, there are just so I would consider the expo as one highlight um, going over to Abu Dhabi and going to the the, the mosque the Sheikh Zayed mosque another highlight going to the, the desert to see it is another um, going to have the desert barbecue is another highlight so you would definitely have time to um, go see the the rest of Dubai um, my typical Dubai trip it's a week long, we usually Saturday to Saturday, so you have six nights there. And um, I already have built in there about almost two days of free time within that trip. What I can probably do is maybe make it a little bit longer to give you more free time. But some of you will spend three days at the expo, some of you will spend a day or two, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, so there definitely will be time to um, see um, other attractions um, and in Dubai, you know, you want to go to the top of the Burj Khalifa. You want to um, go on um, the the cruise. The um, what is it? What is the the boat cruise the Doha, as well? The, the, the Doha's or I think the yeah, yeah. Doha's, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Doha's, Doha's, the, yeah. the cruise. So let me. I, I think I saw another question in there, Donna. Someone was asking, "What else can we do?" In Dubai, yeah, yeah, so yeah I'm going to ask you to expound on that one. Yeah, so um, and I can expound, and if Jose want to add to it, um, that that's great. Um, some of the things that I think are must see, um, in in Dubai that I include in in all of my trips are um, we go to the top of the Burj Khalifa, which is currently the tallest building in the world because I think they're building another building that's going to be taller, but it's all secret about how tall it's gonna be. So going to the top of the Burj Khalifa is always um, a, a good crowd pleaser. Um, going to the Sooks. Now I know y'all love to shop. So um, there's the gold Sooks, there's the spice Sooks. So there's plenty of shopping um, to be around, um, to be done there. So going to the Sooks is great. Um, taking the boat over to old Dubai because you know what most people know about Dubai now is you, you know it as glitz and glamour. You know, everything, when I was there in July, everything we saw was built like in 1995, built in 2000. Everything was like a shiny penny. But Dubai, before they found gold, was just a fishing village. I mean, it was a whole little fishing village and boom, they, you know, it's like the Beverly Hillbilly, they, they struck gold and life changed. Um, but um, so you get, we spend some time in old Dubai. Um, also what we do, which is, which is phenomenal, um, I always have the desert barbecue included. The, the, the whole afternoon where you're going to dune buggies. So you'll see a lot of pictures of my my Dubai group. They take the jeeps, they go out into the deserts, and so um, we try to put people in different cars because some some folks want to like, woohoo! They want the real you know up and down and bouncy rides, and some of my other folks say, "Can you be a little gentle with me?" So we try to tell the drivers you know how what they want, but that's 
definitely a wonderful experience going through the desert um, um, and going through the dunes. So that's the highlight. And then you go to an outdoor barbecue and you have the belly dancers and then you have the other, the male dancers. Um, that's where you can go get the henna tattoo. Um, and also you can ride the camel. And um, so the camel ride is more like, it's like a, a short camel ride. It's not like the ride that we took in Egypt or in um, Morocco, but it is a nice photo op for the camel ride. I always spend a day at the mosque um, over in Abu Dhabi. So we go over to Abu Dhabi. It's like an hour, hour and a half drive um, from downtown Dubai. We go over to Abu Dhabi. We go to the mosque, which is breathtakingly beautiful. I mean, it's just amazing. It's amazing. Over the top. So we go to the mosque. After that, we have lunch. And then we visit some other parts of um, Abu Dhabi. And on the way back, we stop at the Ferrari place and see the Ferrari, you know, people do some more shopping. Um, we do the Dow dinner cruise at night, something that I usually recommend doing. Um, some things that other people have done in their free time, they've gone to the Burj Al Arab, which is the, the, the building that's shaped as a sail, that's kind of very symbolic. Um, and I think they call it the only seven star hotel or something like that. So you can have high tea at the um, Burj Al Arab. So that is an experience in and of itself to have high, high tea there. Um, some of my clients, they've liked going to the Atlantis Hotel. And on Friday, um, the Atlantis Hotel has a day party. And um, my group that went, I think last year before they went to Atlantis doing their free time and they, they party like rock stars um, there. So yes, yeah, so there's plenty of other things you can do. Um, besides uh the the expo i mean you can go to the beach if you want to the weather's warm enough um and you know october november december january maybe in Feb i think february may have gotten a little bit cooler but you can go to the to the beach and just hang out so there is so much to do um my last group last year said they didn't have enough time to explore the hotel they stayed at the jw marriott dubai which was an experience in of itself you know um the jw marriott dubai was at one point i think i'm to like last year the year before the tallest hotel in the world so i was like if i'm sending my group to dubai for a week we stand at the jw marriott marquee so they they like that so then when we do the layover for dubai um i choose different hotels but when we go for a week um we we, we typically stay at the jw marriott dubai so we'll see what happens next year i, I don't know um how things are going to be but um, there is no loss for things to do um, while, while you're um, in Dubai. And another thing I'm thinking of doing, I shouldn't even say this, but I, I am thinking of it, it's not confirmed. Um, a nice extension to the Dubai trip is to go over to the Maldives, I've heard. So for those of you who uh, want to stay a little bit longer, I might try to do like a, an optional extension over to Maldives. Three days is probably good enough for that. So. So stay tuned. Yeah, I see some people have raised their hands. We we can't. Um, if you have questions, if you can put them in the Q and A box, we can we can answer them there. Answer them there. So, Lori, can you talk about the dress code for women? Yeah, um, the Dubai is pretty conservative. It is um, um, it is an Arab and a Muslim country, so you do want to be re respectful um, there. You know, like I tell you, where wherever we go. Uh, we want to be respectful of the culture of, of, that, of that country. Even though you may see other people um, not, not being respectful sometimes, but be respectful. So I would say, um, you know, no short shorts, um, nothing tight, no cleavage revealing. Um, you don't need to be dressed in a, in, you know, in a hijab the whole time. You can wear, like, I have a t-shirt and jeans on right now. I could wear this. Um, um, swimming wear should be worn, you know, at the hotel, um, um, at the pools or at the beaches. Um, so I would just say, just don't be wearing anything too tight or too revealing, you know, keep your shoulders covered, keep your knees covered, but you don't need to be covered as a hijab. The only time um, that we were fully covered was when we went to visit the mosque. Now the mosque is no joke. When you go visit that mosque, they will, they check you before you go in. Um, and I've been very fortunate to have um, great tour guides on um, all of my trips that we've had so far. So usually in the morning, before we go to the mosque, before we, before we get on that bus, 
the tour guide looks over every single person to see if they're dressed appropriately. And if they don't think you're dressed appropriately, we'll send you back upstairs to change. And so um, that's the only time you really need to be covered. When you go to the mosque, you have to be covered from head to toe. So you have to have a, a scarf to cover your, your hair with. Um, whatever is long, your, your, um, your arms need to be covered to your wrist, all the way to your wrist. And then your, whatever you're wearing, your, your skirt or your pants have to be covered all the way to the ankle. And um, so um, that's the only time you really, really, really have to be concerned about, um, about, um, about, about what you're wearing. But just, just be modest. Modesty is, is the key there. Yeah. All right. Um, Jose, do you, if the question is, is there a lineup artist and celebrities that you can get before you book the trip? Is that something um, you're still working on? They're, they're still working on it. Um, I, um, there, there have been names that have been put out there, uh, but I, but I, not, the list has not been finalized. And then on top of it, we've now had this change because of, of COVID. So, um, so there, you know, there's, um, you know, there, there is a list that's, that's coming out and we will, and we'll, we'll have that information, we hope in the next couple of months, maybe, maybe in two to three months, uh, to give you an idea when Dubai won the bid uh, for, um, for hosting the World's Fair, Mariah Carey was flown in to Dubai and she did a concert um, to celebrate. So, th like, I mean, like you said, Lori, these people are no joke. I mean, it's like that, it's their, uh, the, the, they, they're going to do it over the top. They're going to, they're going to get headliner entertainment. Um, also think about a lot of American world-class artists are, uh, are in Dubai pretty frequently. So uh, th that's the other thing too, that for them, I mean, to, you know, to, to headline at something like the World's Fair, it's basically like headlining at the Olympics or headlining at, uh, you know, at the, at, at the Super Bowl, like on a global level. So, um, we, th there, th there will be that level of talent as soon as that is available. I will share it with Lori and she can, she can share it with all of you. But it, it's probably going to be about another couple of months. I know that there were certain people that were on a list and then that, then that sort of changed because now we've got a different schedule coming up. Okay. Thank you for that. And then um, Lori, Kimberly said she's on a board for the Maldives extension. <laughs> I and thought Kim would be. Um, um, either one of you can answer this one. How long is the flight? Uh, it's twelve uh, on Emirates. It's twelve hours. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's nonstop um, from J from JFK. It's it's twelve hours, and it's I mean, Emirates is one of my my favorite. I mean, I flew Emirates to Ghana. I took I took the the, the roundabout right while uh, route <laughs> to get there just to fly. Um, Emirates. I, I have their goodie bags in every color now. So it's, it's a 12 hour, it's a great flight. Um, I don't, there's no, no better way to, to go, I don't think, than Emirates. Yeah. Okay, that is the end of the questions. Oh, well, somebody just came oh, in. Okay, uh, we have time for one more. Okay. Lori, are you going to force me into full retirement with these wonderless sessions, Robin? <laughs> What was uh, it again, Donna? Huh? Says Lori, are you going to force me into full retirement with these wonderless sessions? <laughs> yep, that, that's the plan. <laughs> Don't you see my motives here? <laughs> and so good. Um, so that just means that you're that um you're enjoying these sessions. I'm so glad you are. Um, you know, like I like I like I said, you know, we can't physically travel right now, but we can start planning for um when we can travel, like I truly believe this too shall pass. Um, and if there are, is any benefit, you know, I can introduce you to these new places. And now I can even take some time and massage the trip that I already have planned. Um, so yeah, you're going to go into full retirement, of course. Um, so I want to thank, I think that's how if we're almost, we're right at two o'clock. That's the last question for now. Um, of course, you guys have my, my email address, you know, you can text me, call me, 
you know, email me with any other question. I'll be in contact with, with Jose over the next couple of weeks and months as things begin, begin to materialize and we can um, give you more information about the exact dates of the upcoming trip, the schedule of activities and performances as, as, as well. So just um, stay tuned. We, we have your information. You joined the webinar. Thank you for participating. Um, I ask that you tell others because we have more more coming up. It's going to be hard to to be Jose and his presentation. So thank you. Um, You're very doing... very welcome. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much to all of you who who who, uh, who came and uh, and and Lori for inviting us. And we really look forward to having you uh, in Dubai. It's going to be a very very special World Expo. Uh, so uh, we look forward to welcome welcoming you to a place that uh, has always welcomed visitors. And if any of you are fast. Oh, Jose froze. Okay, so Jose was just welcoming us to Dubai. Um, yeah, looked like his, his internet froze. Anyhow, I thank you all for coming today. Next week, oh, I, I, you're back, Jose. Am I back? You, you froze, no, I yeah. Was, I was just going to I was just going to say, um, I was going to say Ramadan Kareem, which means in Arabic, may Ramadan be generous to you. So if yeah. anybody is fasting. So anyway, okay. thank you. Thank, thank you so much. Next week, we are going to Aruba. So <gasps> come to <Yeah>. the webinar. <laughs> we are, we're going to Aruba <laughs> next week. <laughs> You're welcome to join us too, Jose, okay? We're going to Aruba next week, so be sure to join us um, then and check out the lineup. We have lineups until the end of June right now, and I'll be working on keeping them further. So thank you all for joining. Enjoy your afternoon. Be blessed. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank Stay you. safe. You too. Bye-bye.